Hello, welcome to the Assembly Occupancies Inspection Presentation. We'll discuss the different classifications of assembly occupancies, their definitions, and the codes that govern them. Group A occupancies are defined as the use of a building or structure for the gathering together of persons. The type of gathering dictates the sub-occupancy classification. The number of people permitted to occupy the space, the amount of available space, and how it's used dictates whether or not an occupancy is classified as Group A. If there are fewer than 50 people or less than 750 square feet, it's Group B. Group A1 occupancies usually have fixed seating, a stage, and are designed for viewing plays, concerts, filming of television shows. Group A2 occupancies are used for food and drink service and may or may not have a stage. Group A3 occupancies have myriad uses not covered in groups A1 and A2. Note the Group A3 occupancies used for indoor sporting events do not have spectator seating. Group A4 occupancies are designed for indoor sporting events and do have spectator seating. Group A5 occupancies are used for watching and or participating in outdoor activities. These occupancies are inspected annually by the Fire Prevention Bureau's Special Events Section. So let's start the inspection. It is critical the address is visible. If we can't see the address, fire department arrival will be delayed. Fire lanes need to be kept clear at all times. The markings need to be easily identified. Fire lanes are required to be stenciled every 30 feet or have signs every 100 feet facing traffic. The fire lane on the left is in violation of the fire code. The fire lane on the right looks great. Fire Department Connections, FDCs, are inlets that allow the fire department to connect fire hose to the building and pump in water to boost the water pressure for sprinklers and provide water for firefighting. Signage near the FDC indicating the type of inlet is required. All FDCs must have caps in place and inlets free of debris. A minimum of three feet of clear space around FDCs is required, which allows quick access for the fire department. The collar indicating the type of connection must be in place and legible. The photo on the left shows an obstructed FDC missing its caps. Post indicator valves, PIVs, and outside stem and yoke OS and Y are indicators that tell if the valve controlling the flow of water to the sprinkler system is open or closed. They must be locked in the open position. Fire alarm and sprinkler bells must be clearly labeled with instructions to call the fire department when the bell rings. Now on the interior of the building, check the alarm panel. All the lights should indicate the system is functioning normally. Some alarm panels have a display that provides detailed information about the system's status. Alarm panels are required to have backup power. When the backup power is provided by batteries, the installation date must be indicated directly on the battery. Batteries must be replaced every five years. Documentation of weekly, quarterly, semi-annual, and annual testing and maintenance of the alarm system is required. If the alarm is out of service, a fire watch is required. The policy and instructions for a fire watch can be found on the San Diego Fire Rescue Department website. Doors to riser rooms should be clearly marked and the rooms themselves free of storage. The equipment is required to have at least five feet of clearance in all directions. The five-year certification sticker is required to be affixed to the riser. Nothing can be attached to any portion of this system at any time. Interior standpipes have the same requirements as exterior standpipes. There should be no debris inside the inlet and caps must be securely affixed. Again, nothing can be attached to any component of the system. Documentation of monthly, quarterly, annual, and five-year inspection, testing, and maintenance is required. Sprinkler systems are required to be inspected, tested, and maintained monthly, quarterly, annually, and every five years. For the sprinkler system to work properly, nothing can be stored above or within 18 inches below the level of the sprinkler head. Nothing can be attached to any sprinkler system component. If the sprinkler system is not functioning, a fire watch is required. 
Every room or space that is in assembly occupancy shall have the occupant load of the room or space posted in a conspicuous place near the main exit. The signs must be legible with contrasting text and background. There are many factors that determine the number of required exits. This is just a guideline. 50 to 499 people, two exits. 500 to 999, three exits, a thousand or more, four exits minimum. All exit paths and doors must be free of all obstructions. Pay attention to the exit signs. They must be illuminated at all times and all bulbs must be working. The exit signs must be clearly visible from a distance. The exit path is required to be illuminated. Emergency lighting must be capable of illuminating when there is no power. The ability to leave an occupancy quickly and safely is crucial. All doors and door hardware must function properly. They should not stick or be difficult to open. There should be no obstructions of any kind. Specific guidelines govern the use of locks and latches in A occupancies. In buildings where the occupant load is 300 people or less, a lock is permitted on the main exterior door. In this configuration, the signs required above or near the door stating, this door to remain unlocked when building is occupied. The sign shall be in letters at least one inch high and have a contrasting background. When egress doors are used in pairs, such as double doors, Automatic flush bolts are permitted, however, doorknobs or other surface-mounted hardware are prohibited. Test the doors regularly to make certain they function properly. Do not remove or paint over any fire door labels on the door or door jam. Here are some examples of fire door labels. Fire doors are a very important fire-rated assembly. They help keep smoke and fire compartmentalized, but only when they function properly. Doors should be inspected annually at a minimum and repaired or replaced whenever damaged. Fire doors should self-close and latch and may not be propped open. All three photos are examples of defeating the purpose of a fire rated assembly. When installed with permits and according to code, magnetic door holders may be used to hold fire doors open. When devices detect a fire or smoke, the magnet releases the door and it should close and latch automatically. Magnetic hold open devices require periodic testing and maintenance. Fire rated assemblies are equipment designed to impede fire spread and provide a smoke reduced atmosphere to assist evacuation. In order for fire rated assemblies to function as designed, they must be serviced, tested, inspected and maintained according to manufacturer specifications. Another key factor in functionality is that the devices are not tampered with in any way. For example, in this photo, the smoke heat damper has been used as a channel to run wiring. In the event of a fire, the damper will not shut and will allow smoke and fire to flow freely. This fire rated accordion door is not obstructed and according to code. And in this photo, the magnetic hold open device will not function as designed and installed because the magnet is missing and the door is being held open with a chain and hook. It's crucial that fire resistive construction be maintained in an approved condition at all times. When occupancies are designed and built, certain safeguards, also known as passive construction, are put into place to help slow the spread of smoke and fire. When passive construction is defeated by making holes in walls and conducting improper restorations, smoke and fire readily travels throughout the occupancy. All breaches in fire resistive construction must be restored to approved condition. Use only fire rated materials to repair holes in walls. The repair must be equal in rating to the surface being repaired. In this photo, holes were made to run piping, but the area around the pipes is open. While the stuffed animal in this photo mostly fills the hole, the fire resistive construction has not been properly restored. Here we see fire caulking on the chases, restoring the fire resistive construction. Check the manufacturer's literature to determine the fire rating of any products used to repair fire resistive construction. Chairs set up in a theater style arrangement and not fixed to the floor shall be bonded in groups of three or more when the occupant load is 200 or more unless there are tables provided. The minimum size for fire extinguishers is 2A10BC. As with all extinguishing equipment, a minimum of three feet of unobstructed space is required for access. All fire extinguishers must be visually inspected monthly, serviced annually. Records of this inspection and service shall be kept on site. 
In all A occupancies with commercial kitchens, K class extinguishers are required and must be serviced annually. Hood extinguishing systems are required to be serviced every six months. State fire marshal tags are required for all extinguishing systems and extinguishers. Electrical rooms and panels must be free of combustibles. All breakers must be labeled either by labeling each switch or completing the panel schedule. All open spaces are required to have approved blanks or covers. Extension cords may not be affixed to or go through walls and ceilings and shall not be placed under flooring of any kind and not subject to damage. Extension cords are for temporary use with portable appliances only. When the portable device being powered is grounded, the extension cord should be grounded as well. Extension cords must be plugged directly into a wall outlet or power strip with surge protection and may power only one portable device at a time. Cover plates must be in good condition and completely cover the outlet, switch, or box. Combustible decorative materials are required to be inherently flame resistant or treated to be flame resistant. Consult the informational documents for the flame resistant chemical to determine the frequency of retreatment. A permit is required to use an open flame or candle in connection with assembly areas, the dining area of restaurants, or drinking establishments. Once the inspection has been finalized and all violations, if any, are corrected, the fire inspection report is your permit for the fire department to have candles and open flames. Stringent regulations govern open flames in the A occupancy. Class 1 and 2 flammables are not permitted. If tipped over, lighting devices with more than 8 ounces of fuel are required to be self-extinguishing and not leak more than a quarter teaspoon per minute. If the lighting device does not self-extinguish when tipped over, it must self-return to an upright position. Open flames must be enclosed. However, it is permissible to have openings on the side, provided they are no more than 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. The top distance to the flame shall be such that a piece of tissue paper placed on the top will not ignite in 10 seconds. Chimneys, the decorative open flame cover, are required to be constructed of non-combustible material and securely attached to the open flame device. The chimney is not required to be attached if the fuel self-extinguishes when tipped over. Candelabras with flame-lighted candles shall be securely fastened in place to prevent overturning and located away from nearby occupants, drapes, curtains, and other combustibles. Flaming food and beverage preparations are rare occurrence in the city of San Diego. The regulations governing this activity are very specific. Flammable or combustible liquids shall be dispensed from either a one ounce container or a container that is a maximum one quart capacity that only dispenses a maximum one ounce at a time. The flame should never reach more than eight inches high. Pouring, ladling, or spooning flaming food is restricted to a maximum height of 8 inches above the receiving receptacle. The server must have a wet towel available to smother the flames in the event of an emergency. According to fire code, a permit is required to operate a public assembly. Once the inspection has been finalized and all violations, if any, are corrected, the fire inspection report is your permit from the fire department to operate a public assembly. This applies to any other operational permits listed on the inspection report. Thank you for your time and attention. Your diligence will help keep everyone safe while in your occupancy. Contact the Fire Prevention Bureau at 619-533-4400 with any questions.